so this claim of 26 billion years yeah. is that does it make any sense so it 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 can make sense in the in the following context imagine you see a planet and on that planet there are people and they're they're playing around with like these electrified pieces of silicon and you'd be like wait a second like that's really weird like that planet's only 4 billion years old how is it possible that they're not only able to to talk on electrified silicon but they're also like having an internet and space flight no 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 it takes longer in my model of how civilizations form it must have taken 8 billion years for that to happen so therefore there it's impossible to reconcile with the earth being 4.3 billion years old therefore the earth must be 8 billion years old what he said, this guy Gupta said, there are properties of galaxies. They're rotating. They're 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 too they're appearing too early on the universe's early history um, to have developed into the spiral characteristics and the population distribution of them is too numerous to have occurred in a universe that's only quote unquote thirteen billion years. And you actually said that you said like, I always thought you know thirteen billion is a pretty big number. <laughs> you know now they're saying twenty seven. So what's the difference? But there's a big difference because implicit in that criticism is that there are flaws and, and imperfections in how we understand the Big Bang. Okay, when in reality, at best, he could be correct about the formation of galaxies. But you see, those are two separate things, right? The formation and the structure of a galaxy has no bearing on how old the universe is necessarily. It tells you something about your models of computer simulations is what he's effectively criticizing, not criticizing the evidence that something like a Big Bang occurred at a very definite point in the universe's past that we believe to about one... To the we have equivalent precision for me to say I know how old you are exactly, but but if you looked at a fifty year old person, you could say you know the day they were born plus or minus a week. Like that's the precision with which modern astronomers know the age of the universe. And one guy is coming up with this idea that because there's certain galaxies within it that have formed this. I mean, again, imagine if we found like a hyper advanced civilization that has warp drives and you know does every, this type three Dyson civilizations or whatever. They would not cast doubt on the evolution and the history of the universe itself. That would not cause me to question that. It would cause me to question my models of how pop people form and right. aliens form and stuff like that. But it wouldn't cause me to question the age of the universe. There's nothing related to it. When we are studying the age of the universe and the vastness of space, is it is there potentially new technology that would expose more than we currently can view that would change your model? Uh, in the sense that we are, Joms as scientists, especially me as an experimentalist, in contrast to people like Brian Cox, um, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Eric Weinstein, et cetera, my job is not to prove theories right. My job is actually to prove them wrong. That's really what I get paid to do, is to narrow and winnow out so much so that what is left is the truth. There's a quote by Isaac Asimov. He said, if you think the earth is flat, you're wrong. If you think it's a perfect sphere, you're also wrong because it's not a perfect sphere. It actually bulges at the equator. It has properties, you know, because the earth is spinning. And the way it forms, it's a little bit like a pear, okay? Um, so it's also not, but it's much less wrong to say it's a sphere than to say it's flat. Our job is to continually find the flaws, the cracks that, as um, uh, you know, it said, you know, the cracks let the light in. Right. Our job is to find the flaws in the existing paradigms, shatter those, and refine those. And there's countless, you know, examples of that throughout scientific history. So there are ways that I would be caused to doubt the formation story of galaxies. Absolutely. I mean, that's almost like predicting hurricanes. You know, I just came through a hurricane to see you, right? There's a big hurricane in San Diego this week, and like it's like an inch of rain, okay? You know how we drive in Southern California, right? Um, so uh, even the slick of a uh, trace of rain causes us to go into into total terror. Um, but, uh, but we didn't know where it was going to make exact landfall because a, a climate is an example, as I said earlier, not of something that's merely complicated. It's complex. The best way to simulate the Earth's climate is with another Earth. In other words, there's no irreducible way to reduce the amount of complexity to describe a physical system than the system itself. That's right. a notion of complexity. That's a definition of complexity. Uh, so in the context of what you said, absolutely. And people like Allison and others, Kirkpatrick, they definitely 
are, would be more thrilled than anybody to discover, well, we don't understand there's something wrong with our model of how the universe, uh, not how the universe formed, but how galaxies form. So what I'm asking is, with the levels of detection that we have available, how significant is the change in what the web is able to do? And is it possible that, like, when we're looking, is, is it whatever levels of detection, whatever methods of detection we have now, is it absolute that if you go to 13 point whatever billion years, we couldn't have better methods of detection. There's no way we no, would we get could. more data, more information. And would it change? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, no, I, I misinterpreted what you said. What I'm saying is like, is it possible that with new technology, we would get more information? We'd be able to see more for, and then you would remap this yes. idea. Let me explain. Uh, sorry, I misinterpreted what you said earlier, but now I can correct it. Yes. And the good news is that's what the Simons Observatory is trying to do. Mm. The Webb Telescope has was never built for, nor can it say anything about the Big Bang or what caused the Big Bang. Or, it's just galaxy formations. It's, it's not just, by the way. It's, it's That's a pretty big deal. <laughs> but it's a, Galaxy it's formation, properties of stars, exoplanets, the atmospheres, mm. the chemistry, uh, civilizations on exo. It can do so much cool stuff. 